Hey guys, Dave Thibodeau here from uh, DT Model Art. Welcome to part four of the famous Eleanor GT500 project that I'm doing for Gravity Colors here. And uh, last time I left you, I had shot the Gravity Colors pepper gray onto the body after I had masked off carefully the, uh, the stripes from the previous paint scheme that I did, which was the metallic black. And I pulled the stripes up, or I'm sorry, I pulled the tape up from the stripes, and uh, here's our results, guys. There we are. There's a little bump right here in the roof. I think it's in the resin. Didn't catch it until after I did the paint job. But I believe once I clear it and level it out and polish it, you won't see that. But there we are. So basically what I'm going to do next is get it all ready for clear. But of course before I can do that, I have to apply the scale production um, kit supplied decals for the side there. I've already done one side of here, as you can see. They give you the decal and the uh, small GT500 logo, which is great that they do that. And now what we're going to do is we're going to do the other side. So basically, I'm going to set it down and show you how I do that. Um, most of you, I'm sure, know how to put decals on, but uh, you know, I'm going to do this anyways. Just do a quick side so you can see it. Here's our decal that Scale Production gives you. And we're going to just dip it in the water. And what we're going to do next is uh, let it set a little bit, and we're going to put it on the car. Now, what I do when I dip decals in water is just dip them in the water and then set it aside and put it down. Um, also, they give you the, uh, the small GT500 logo for the side of the car. This goes on afterwards, obviously, after you put the stripe on. Okay, now what I'm going to do is apply this and then put a small coat of Microsol over top. What this does is allows you to, uh, to get the decal to conform really well. I want to make sure that I, I, I blot it down, I lay that on, let it sit. You can also sometimes use a hair dryer if you want to, uh, to coax the decal along to get it to snug into all the corners and crevices. Um, but uh, this stuff is magic. You really need this. Um, I also use Micro Set, which is this stuff right here. I use that as well. Um, but uh, most of the time, I just use this, and it works really, really well. So what we're going to do is apply this, put it down on here. So you lay down there like that. I use the tip of an X-Acto knife to get it exactly where I want it. This one is actually laid in place pretty well, but I want it a little lower than it is. Make sure you leave enough on the edges so that it uh, it overlaps a little bit. Just like that. And then I take a Q-tip. And I run it across here. Make sure that it's centered for the GT500 symbol right there. That's your, that's your solid centered block stripes are even on each side where it overlaps the door a little bit in the front here and the end of the of the uh, the wheel flare right there so I need to go back a little bit move it back just a little bit and it's stuck pretty well so we're gonna just be happy with that and you just blot this in there like that See that? Now once you get all the excess water out with a Q-tip, you can use a rag if you want a clean cloth. What we're going to do, always take a clean brush when you're using Microsol. I've got a nice clean brush right here. And I'm going to dip my brush in the Microsol. And I'm going to run a good amount of this right across here. Like that. Now, guys, you can you can set this aside and let it dry. You can put it in a dehydrator if you guys have used a hot dehydrator before. It's very handy for this. It speeds up the uh, setting process of the decals. 
Um, but I am going to use a hair dryer in this case. I've got it right here on the side. And turn it on here. Run this across. Okay, that's enough. If you want, it's set now, it's it's burnished down a little bit, you can take and just run another another layer of this across here and let it air dry. But I tell you, once you've laid this decal solvent on, do not move the decals. I'm sure a lot of you already know this, but I'm just saying it because I've had it happen in past experience. It rips the decal or it just melts it and it kind of smears on the body. That's not good either. I'm gonna let this sit. I'm going to add my GT500 logo, and then I'm going to take a really sharp X-Acto knife, and I'm going to cut slits where the door openings are, and then add a little bit more of the decal solvent in there, and get them to really snug down really tight. Tighter the better. Remember, I'm clearing over these things. I want them nice and tight, almost like paint. And if the decal is conforming properly, and it's a good quality decal like these are, they're going to lay down like paint, and look like paint, just like that does right there on that side. So, I hope you all like the pepper gray because it is a gorgeous color. It worked really well over the black. And then when I lifted up the uh, tape for the stripes, it came out beautiful. I blacked out my tail panel on the back. One thing I didn't tell you guys, there's a little mark here, but I removed the uh, windshield wipers that were molded in because I'm going to add photo etch units. Left a little bit of a mark across there, as you can see. But the new... That gives me a place that I know I can put the new blade, so I'm good with that. I'm happy with that. Uh, the, the inside of the uh, engine compartment will be semi-gloss black. I'll probably clear it, polish it, and then tape that off and shoot that black later on. Overall, though, very, very pleased. And like I said, the, uh, the stripes came out really nice. They're a little fat, probably a little fatter than they should be, but I like them that way. But I did have to do the, uh, the front ones here a little bit narrower because of that. But we're good. It'll be fine. No one's going to know. It's my car. I'm cool with it. Well, I hope you enjoyed this section. Um, what I'm going to do next is get the uh, body ready for clear. I will be using the Gravity Colors Multi-Use Clear to shoot this car. It's a two-part component clear. Um, it says it right on the bottle. You mix it three parts gloss, one part hardener, and one part thinner. And mix it together. On my final coat, like I said, I'm going to add a little bit more thinner and let it flow out. It allows it to flow out a little better and give you a real glass-like finish. This is great stuff. I mean, once you're done clearing it, it's going to be a, a impenetrable finish that nothing will affect. You can polish it like glass, and it will last for years, or at least the, 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 uh, the life of the model, let's put it that way, because it's real automotive paint. It's good stuff. So anyways, I'm going to get the body... Um, the decals all done, snug to the car, probably dump it to dehydrate for a little while, let them get really, really sharp, hard. Then I'm going to carefully wash the body with Dawn dish detergent to get any kind of prints from my hands off, any of the decal solvent residue from the decals. Then I'm going to dry it, put it in my dehydrator for about 10 minutes to dry every part of the car, and I'll see you out in the booth. We'll get it sprayed up. We'll get it cleared out. So stay tuned. Okay, we're out in the booth. Gravity Clear is in my Badger. I use my Badger again. I've, I've told you this before in my other videos. Just because it holds a lot more clear than the Infinity. Doesn't mean it's a better airbrush, but it just is more convenient for me. So I'm using this with a nice inline uh, filter. Once again, I, I shoot about 30 to 35 pounds uh, PSI pressure um, when I do my clears because I want it to go on there really smooth and uh, just get it on the car nice and nice and uh, strong. So, got my body here. Hopefully you all can see this. 
Here we go. Now, again, I blow it off first, blowing off all the dust, especially with the clear. It's really important. If you get clear caught, or I'm sorry, dust caught in your clear, it's not coming out. Hopefully it'll come out later when you uh, polish it, but I'm trying to save myself a little work. You're not going to avoid all the dust, that's for sure. It's just not going to happen. So again, test it out, get it to come out, start laying it on. Now the first coat is your tack coat. It doesn't have to be super smooth. It needs to be just a good barrier coat to build up the clear. So here we go. Nice even strokes across. Keep it in the light so you can see how it's going on. Going on really nice. Looking good. Again, we're just going for coverage here, not for a finish. Want to get a good tack coat on here. Goes on very nicely. Remember, keep your airbrush moving. Don't just stop in an area. It could run on you if you do that. I keep it moving across. I don't sit here and wiggle it and go in circles. Back and forth. Keeping a nice, steady, even pressure on the gun. Don't pull back too far. You can do that later when you want to put the second or third coat on. Nice even pressure. As you can see, my first coat's on. And it already has a nice shine to it. Let me put the second coat on, and on the third coat, I'll come back to you guys so you can see how nice it looks in the third coat. Okay. I put two good light tack coats on it. It's ready for this final coat. Here we go. You'll find it goes on a lot smoother after it's already had its tack coat on here. Cage will be proud. Notice I'm going a little slower this time because I want to get excellent coverage everywhere.
casting it on now, guys. Just trying to get really nice, smooth coverage. The more, the smoother I can get to clear, the less polishing I'll have to do. That's what I'm trying to do.